Okay. Well, I called in because I wanted to, to uh, show off uh, the latest three-dimensional spaceship generator that I made. That um, pretty and cool. Talk, and to talk about the methodologies that I use to procedurally generate alien spaceships. Because I've been doing it actually for quite a long time. I made my first one in 97. So, but this is a neat tool. The idea is that it mashes parts together, and every time I hit the space bar, you get a brand new spaceship. <laughs> so there's one. There's one. There's one. Is it different every there's time? One. Yes, it's completely randomly generated every time. And all I'm doing is hitting the space bar. Can Oops, people download nice this? Is it or is this? Well, I'm very happy to share the code, and I'm very happy to share the tool. But you know, this is a show about people doing it for themselves. So I want to explain how I'm doing it. Okay, cool. So of course I'm I'm talking about 3D, but you can do this in in 2D. I've made plenty of two-dimensional alien spaceships that work on the same principle. And the the first overriding principle is uh, bilateral symmetry. The idea is that the left side has to be a mirror of the right side. And in fact, what I'm doing here in what you're seeing is I'm, I start with a bunch of just simple uh, shapes in 3D that are all right side shapes. And iteratively, I pick one, I kind of scale it or, or stretch it a little bit randomly, and I add it to the list. And when I've got a few, I've got 10 or so, actually currently I've got 11, um, and uh, when I'm done with that, I just mirror the whole thing left to right. So bilateral symmetry is really critical. But then on top of that, um, I'm relying on the fact that uh, we humans like to see patterns even when there aren't any patterns. So this random amalgamation of hunks of 3D uh, actually look like spaceships to us because generally we like to see something and make sense of it and when it's a bunch of hunk of things and we say oh by the way that's a spaceship most people will go oh I see it so here I am changing the texture the the uh, two-dimensional skin on the various spaceships so that they look, look different um, and I can also zoom in and zoom out with this tool because hey it's 3D is this something now, that can be uh, easily exported to a game? Uh, yes, actually, I this this tool, uh, this particular version of my tool exports to uh, a file format that I can load into my game, and, and of course other people can too. Um, and it, incidentally, it also exports to something called an STL file, which is a fairly simple 3D triangle list that's intended for use in, uh, in industrial machines. And the reason for this is because I've been cooking some of these 3D spaceships into the STL form so that I can take them to the school where they have a 3D printer and actually print them out as plastic models. Oh, cool. Let me show you real quick that I can stretch out my ships so that they're nice and long and pointy. And that's really just a stretch. But sometimes, you know, you need your spaceships to be long and pointy, and that's just, you know, in one direction. And also, uh, the amount of pieces that I amalgamate together uh, does give a, a certain tenor to the spaceship. And again, all I'm doing is I'm taking right side pieces, randomly slapping them together, and then mirroring the whole thing left to right. That's cool. So it's a really interesting technique, and you know, it, it the 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 fact that it works so well, I've learned over the years, doesn't have anything to do with the technique being sophisticated. It has to be do with the fact that we human beings never really, as a as a group, we don't deal with alien spaceships on a day to day basis. So honestly, we don't know what they look like. So almost anything looks like an alien spaceship. <laughs> now, if I if I were to try and procedurally generate a human face, 
Well, that's at the opposite end of the difficulty spectrum because every human being studies human faces their entire life. Ah. And everything that you might want to procedurally generate from tables to mountains to whales to whatever falls somewhere in that spectrum of really, really hard and really, really easy depending on how people normally interact with that kind of thing on a day-to-day -day basis. Tech Bear, where can people go to find this? Uh, well, I don't actually have it up right this second, but within the next 24 hours, I will happily put links onto the Fab Man and Circuit Girl forums. Cool, thanks. So just wanted to share. It's a great show. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on.